Hey everyone, I'm back with part 7 in my MIDI mapping, MIDI controller, control surface for Reaper project thing. Um, in this video, obviously this is the Arturia BeatStep Pro, which isn't really ideal for a lot of uh, reasons. Um, basically all the pads are Reaper functions and the step buttons are more Reaper functions, so you can't really play anything. <clears throat> it's just good for like a controller like if it's sitting you know next to like your main keyboard or your drum pad or something like that you could obviously uh, change you know um, your maps you know right here this is set to uh, project number one so I could have like a regular drum thing on project two project three anything like that but just for the sake of this video this is just one simple map um, this is basically how it works um, I got a basic Reaper project open, same project I've been using pretty much for the last few videos. Um, all right, so basically this is the most important thing. This is the jog by measure encoder. Uh, since the BeatStep Pro offers, you know, the soft click, I, I call these clicky encoders, even though you can't push down on them. Um, it's just nice because you could you could feel like every you know every notch is like a movement. Um, so jog left and right by measure. This is track scroll up and down or track select. Uh, this is horizontal zoom. This is vertical zoom. Um, it's a little slow because I think I set the encoder to like slow uh, turning. But if you set it to fast, you know, it actually zooms in a little little faster um, like this. This is a little better. Um, this is uh, the master play rate, um, you know, left and right. A lot of people like to mess with their... Uh, play rate of their projects uh, to see if something sounds better slower or faster um, this is basically semitone up or down for the selected item so uh, you can see this uh, green ish item uh, closest to the you know beginning of the project um, going counterclockwise it goes down in semitones clockwise up in semitones real easy to control it again since these uh, encoders are notched clicky you know um, this is move item um, really handy so mouseless you, know, you just move this anywhere you want and it moves items by grid grid size right now it's set to 16th notes um, and this is volume for the selected track and it's set to soft takeover so basically uh, it doesn't jump so if you you know go to the next track and adjust the volume there whatever it was you know just it's pickup mode or soft takeover is what that's called um, these uh, eight encoders right here are just MIDI learn channel 14 uh, so you can set it to any plug-in parameters that you want pretty handy um, uh, and also these are custom caps uh, these are the chroma caps from DJ tech tools just love those uh, I want to get more of them really cool they feel great as well much better than the uh, stock BeatStep Pro stuff or the stuff on the BeatStep or the Mini Lab Mark II. They all basically have the same, I don't know, hex kind of, uh, you know, caps. I don't know. I, I like just like a smooth circle. It's definitely the way to go. So, all right. So anyway, yeah, that's volume. And these step buttons, basically this set uh, one through eight is region one through eight. So basically, you know, if, if you made regions in your... Um, project shift R is the given shortcut I think I'm pretty sure um, whoops don't want to scrub that uh, hang on, I'm just trying to make a simple regions I'll just do it real quick there we go so basically these are just direct region access which is pretty cool um, especially for live looping or just performing live and you need to loop like a section um, Reaper goes pretty deep with the uh, the way that it plays uh, loops and time selections, which is what this is. Uh, you can have it just loop indefinitely and then cue the next one. And then when it gets to the end of that region, it'll it'll play that and loop that region. Um, or you could set it to measure, just like Ableton Live when you launch a uh, a new scene or a clip. You know, it's it's by bar, so pretty handy. I just like that just for uh, convenience. And then these other step buttons are item edit so basically this one is select item this is duplicate item split item glue item trim right edge of item uh, really handy when you just want to extend loops 
Uh, this button right here is loop item source. So if you record like a MIDI clip and you want to drag it out and it's, it, it's not like a loopable item. Uh, what this does is you just set your, you know, crop it like, like a perfect, you know, two bar loop or whatever. And then you click a uh, loop item source. This way you don't have to go into F2 to edit, you know, like, like for instance, like right here, I'm going to select that item and then go to F2 and it gives you, you know, like, like the loop source is, is uh, right there and you have to click apply and then okay. But this button right here is just a quick shortcut, bam, loop item source. And then you could, you know, uh, drag something out and have it a perfectly looped item. Really handy. Uh, as I say in all my videos, everything is really handy <laughs> the way I map these things. Um, quantize, it's just a quick quantize set to whatever the MIDI editor was last set to. Uh, common quantize value is obviously 16th notes. So, you know, you record a MIDI item and you just click quantize and it's done. Uh, this is arm selected track. So, you know, I could just scroll through the tracks, arm this one, this one, disarm that, arm that, disarm, or arm. You get the idea. Um, so that's really handy. And then obviously all of these buttons do something. Um, what I hate about the BeatStep Pro is this is not mappable. This is your transport. Um, <laughs> I, I wish any of these were mappable. It would be amazing, especially this rate encoder, um, this swing encoder, this randomness encoder, and the probability encoder. None of that is mappable. It's only on this side. So you got to kind of take what you can get. So uh, these two buttons right here, or pads, I should say, are previous and next track, just like the track scroll. Uh, this is undo. Um, this is uh, open the Media Explorer, AKA browser. Um, so you can just, you know, drag in some loops um, or, you know, samples of any kind. Um, marker previous and next, or, you know, if you have regions and not markers, it just kind of goes to the beginning and end of each region as you go left and right, which is cool. But if you have markers set, which I will do, I'm gonna delete all these regions, hang on, just holding alt, clicking left, left click, just removing each region one by one. And then uh, this button coincidentally is insert marker, uh, or this pad. So I'll put one there, put one here, put one here, put one there, and marker previous and next, very handy. Uh, these two pads above the marker thing is set time selection start and set time selection end. So you can, uh, let's see, um, that to that. And what's cool is the cursor uh, actually goes right back to the start, uh, you know, the beginning of your time selection, which is really handy if you just want to make a quick loop or live looping, you know, MIDI recording or anything like that. Same thing here. See, really cool. Um, Toggle windows and focus, they obviously have everything to do with the plugins. So say I have this plugin window open and, you know, obviously toggle windows just means, you know, show and hide that. So whatever windows were last open, it closes all of them and then opens all of them if you hit it again. I like to use this button more as a close all windows, you know, close all plugin windows, uh, less than a toggle windows thing. So, you know, but technically it works as a toggle. Um, which is handy if you wanted to show all your plugins again, but mo most of the time people just want to show, see their entire arrangement. So you just kind of, you know, like say if you got like 15 plugin windows open, boom, they're all gone. Um, focus is really cool. So if I load, um, if I open this uh, FX chain, uh, this has two different plugins on it. Um, in the FX chain, it's got the Tal Noisemaker synth, a free synth that's very powerful and a lot of fun. Um, and then it also has the free Valhalla super massive and what focus does, uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry, not focus. Uh, hang on. I got to open up this one too. Oops. Oh, what am I doing here? I'm messing up my entire <laughs> thing. Hang on one sec. Uh, trying to open that. There we go. Okay. So what focus does is, you know, like that is the focused plugin. And then that one is, it just cycles through the, um, you know, the plugins. So you can see the parameters of that one or that one. And then again, toggle windows or just close all boom, you know, really easy. Now this next one is called cycle FX. So if I again have this one open, uh, not this one, cause that only has one thing in the FX chain, but this one has two cycle FX. 
um, on the selected track, it basically, whoops, it just, uh, you know, that one's your focus plugin in the chain and that one is, so it's like focus, but it just kind of like cycles through however many plugins are in your chain, which is really nice, um, or channel strip. Um, so that's really handy. And FX chain is, is one of the most um, common buttons that I use. So if I, let's say I'm, you know, scrolling through my tracks and I wanna see, you know, uh, this one, you just click this and it shows that specific tracks uh, FX chain. And same thing for track two, it just shows that one. So it just opens up the FX chain on whatever track you have selected. Um, this is Poise and also MC MPC Beats. Um, so uh, yeah, insert marker you already saw. These bottom three pads are transport, loop on and off, play slash stop, record. They do exactly what they're supposed to do. And that's pretty much it. Um, oftentimes, you know, I'll, I'll do all the arrangement stuff, you know, just with this specific map uh, when I use BeatStep Pro, which I don't frequently use it. I usually use Machine Mark III or the Arturia Mini Lab Mark II or the Behringer X-Touch Mini because they, they just feel, you know, like everything is just like right there. And they're smaller and it's just everything's just kind of real easy and you get everything. Um, but the BeatStep Pro is a lot of fun and it's just a cool design. You got 16, you know, customizable pads and 16 customizable step buttons, 16 customizable encoders. They could be absolute mode or relative. Uh, so it's really handy. But again, if all this stuff could have been mapped, that would have been amazing. Um, but yeah, so basically uh, it's just real simple. Uh, I'll demonstrate the item editing stuff. So, you know, right here, uh, you know, we're on this uh, third track. So select that item, select this one, and, you know, we could move this one or we could select this one and move this. Whoops, not the jog wheel, but the move item. We can move this to the end if we want. And, you know, let's say we want to split uh, this clip, you know, like right in the middle, split. Um, if we want to glue it, we can glue it like that and see how it turned into like a different color, which is cool. Um, and trim right edge is really, really, really handy. So I'm going to zoom out. It's one of my favorite uh, Reaper actions. So literally, yeah. So basically you can make it that long. You can make it short. You could make it extra long, really handy. And then you can change your track, go to this, select that trim right edge you see just like hands-free or not hands-free but mouseless you know workflow which is the whole point of all of this uh this gigantic project of mine um and let's see so let's go back to track one and we'll select this item now this is already a loopable item so if i trim right edge you'll see it loop you know perfectly but let's say I don't want it to loop. I don't know why anybody wouldn't want it um, to do that, but uh, you could, you know, disable loop item source with that button right here. And then when you drag it out with trim right edge, uh, that didn't work. Okay. Um, usually, there we go. So right there, like, like see how I, I hit it and it's not a loopable item anymore. So maybe I missed the button push and then I'm going to click it again and trim right edge. Yeah, I think I messed up something along the way, but that's fine. Um, let's see, loop item source and then trim right edge. There we go. So now it's back to a loopable item. Just a little quirky, you know, Reaper behavior, but you know, very cool, very easy. Um, and yeah, what else? Uh, quantize and arm, you know, you saw, you saw those functions before. All right, so as always, I'm pretty tired. Um, I just wanted to try to really do at least one of these a day if possible. Um, so the next ones that I'll probably do are, I keep saying the Machine Jam, Machine Mark II, and Machine Studio. I'll definitely get them in. Uh, I can demonstrate the Machine Micro Mark II as well. Um, not as easy to use as a control surface because it's just a single encoder. Um, and the screen doesn't show a lot, but uh, you know the other machines, like the regular full-size machines, are definitely uh, much, much better. Um, for you know this kind of stuff but uh yeah beat step pro is great but obviously the main purpose of this is as a hardware step sequencer which is really awesome um i haven't spent a lot of time with it uh for that you know exact purpose 
but maybe down the road uh, for sure. Um, so yeah, uh, very simple map. Um, I think one of the other maps I have uh, is set up to like, you know, like a C1, you know, typical like machine or like NPC like map, you know, where it's like the bottom row of pads, the second row, um, the third row, the fourth row, that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, so uh, if you guys had any questions, uh, please leave a comment below. Uh, if you found this video helpful, uh, please give it a like. Um, subscribe if you haven't yet. Uh, it helps uh, get you know seen on YouTube because the algorithm is a huge pain in the ass for people like me with only uh, less than 2,000 subscribers. But I'm hoping to get a lot more than that with the more you know videos that I put up. Um, but you know, again, I really appreciate your time checking out this video and any other geeky midi things that I love to do, and I do a lot of those. Um, so yeah. Um, on that note, uh, wear your mask, be safe, uh, don't be a dick, and yeah, I will uh, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.